Deadline tonight on Dateline 2018. It's coming home. It's coming. No, not football. Donald Trump is coming back to the old country and everyone's pleased to see him. The UK government's Brexit saga continues to go from strength to strength as half the cabinet storm out of drinks and nibbles with Theresa May over the outrageous suggestion that French bread is better than British bread. We have an exclusive interview with the new Brexit secretary to discuss what it all means. And it's England's best World Cup since whenever the last time it was that they got this far or something. And as tension mounts in Russia, we've detailed coverage from our World Cup correspondent, Harry Spring. Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of Dateline 2018. As a nation waits with bated breath for the newly crowned American Emperor's winged chariot, Air Force Trump, to land here on this sceptred isle, let us bring you up to speed with all the stuff and all the things what it is what Trump's going to do on this UK visit. The controversial US President has a packed diary ahead of him following his arrival in the UK this week, beginning with a sensual back massage from Prince Philip in the private residences of Buckingham Palace before heading to the grounds of Windsor Castle for the annual Royal Poor Hunt. In order to avoid ill-informed left-wingers who are apparently planning some minor protest, most likely to embarrass them rather than anyone else, President Trump and his wife will be travelling to Scotland, where he is almost universally adored due to his authentic Scottish heritage and encyclopedic knowledge of their history and culture. <laughs> Yes, he's as Scottish as Greyfriars Bobby in an episode of Outlander eating a deep-fried Mars bar. He's more Scottish than the Scots. His clan credentials are impeccable, and you can trace his family all the way back in time to Conor MacLeod. As far as we're aware, and we've done some digging, this is the only Scottish person who doesn't like Donald Trump. I told them to him, get him charged with harassment if they come near me again. Outside of Scotland, though, in London, a few lefty art school trot snowflake types are planning a really immature and childish stunt. A gigantic balloon depicting President Trump as a petulant baby. Here's some footage of it. No, no, hang on. Yes, that, that's the balloon. That's the balloon. I think maybe whoever did that should grow up. In fact, I hope the police manage to put a stop to it before it even gets into the air. I mean, freedom of speech is all well and good when it's for sensible reasons, but I think you're just being disrespectful and it shouldn't be allowed. Yes, I mean, I don't really like the phrase, but you're snowflakes. And I don't mean that you're all unique before you try and get all clever with your education. Anyway, despite our best wishes, there is still a sizable contingent of people who insist that Donald Trump is a fascist. And in the interest of balance, we suppose we should give those voices a hearing. And with that in mind, we are joined now from his home in the Cotswolds by a senior advisor to the Conservative Party, 3rd Viscount of Leadbottom and 7th Sea Lord of the Admiralty, Sir Godfrey Eden Asquith the 19th. Sir Godfrey, is it appropriate for the UK government to be welcoming onto these shores a man who many people believe to be a fascist. No, I, th I think it's rather outrageous to suggest that the British government would ever be involved in any regime that could be termed fascist. I mean, can you name but one regime across the world that has ever been supported by the British government than then is then accused of being a fascist regime? Well, you may well have a point there, Sir Godfrey, but humour me while I try. Chile? No, I'm quite warm, thank you. <laughs> Very good, Sir Godfrey. OK, I'll let you have that one. Um, Let's see now, a similar part of the world, Argentina. Uh, initially, but then we, of course, had to go down there eventually and uh, sort them out militarily. I, I couldn't go myself, actually, because my, my knee was playing up just at the time the task force left, unfortunately. Well, what about Germany at the very beginning of the Second World War? Specifically, of course, the royals. Uh, well, Prince Edward, um, the, the, when the royal family gave their approval, we could but not follow them. OK, let's try something a little more up to date. Uh, General Franco's Spain. Ah, uh, I, I th yes, he fagged for me at Eton, actually. Right, and, well... Uh, I, before, you, before you mention him, I bet you're going to mention Muzzo, aren't you? Good old Muzzo. I'm sorry, who's... Are you referring to Benito Mussolini? <laughs> yes, yes. He was a very good rugby player, actually. I, I, I remember him floundering in the mud one day and uh, looking up at me with his uh, trusting eyes. And uh, I, I, I couldn't help but fall in love. But uh, uh, can we wrap this up, uh, gentlemen? Because... Uh, 
Um, I've got drinks at six at the club and I really don't want to be late. It's bad for No, me. no, no. Of course, Sir Godfrey, we appreciate your time today. And I, I suppose my question might be, given the British government's track record of finding itself on the wrong side of history with regards to fascist dictatorships, is it wise to hitch our wagon to Donald Trump's presidency? Well, I think you'll find, my friend, that where there's a lot of dosh, you'll find there's a lot of British government. Third Viscount of Leadbottom and seventh Sea Lord of the Admiralty, Sir Godfrey Eden Asquith the 19th. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Dateline 2018 is the programme you are watching currently, and it's time for the next story. One word, Brexit. After the great and the good of the Conservative cabinet descended on Theresa May's holiday pad at Chequers to discuss the unquestionable bin fire, that is, the UK leaving the European Union, it quickly spiralled out of control for Mrs May as one by one they fell. First, the Brexit secretary, David Davis, stormed out screaming something about the superiority of English wine. And then it was the turn of Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson, who has been doing the rounds ever since, telling anyone who will listen that Theresa May is, quote, a dead woman walking. Undoubtedly, the biggest blow to the Prime Minister, though, was the resignation of her Brexit secretary, David Davis. And we have his replacement, Dominic Rabb, on the line now from Wooler. Good evening, Mr. Rubb. Obviously, events have been moving at a pace this week, but David Davis is gone, and you're the new man in the job. What next? Well, I spoke to David Davis last week. We no discussion of resignations at all. We need to work together from backbenchers right the way through to the top team. Mm, well, that's all very well and good, but David Davis has now resigned, and you, Dominic Raab, are the new Brexit secretary. How does the government move forward now? No, I think that's um, silly, really. But it may uh, well be silly, Mr. Rahab, but that's where we are. Can I just double check that you are aware that David Davis has resigned from his post as the Brexit Secretary and that you have been named as his successor? Yes. Right, so would it be too much for me to ask what impact this would have now on the Brexit process now that you have been named as the Brexit Secretary? Theresa May is the boss, she picks their top team. And you know what, I'm delighted to be working on the housing brief. We've You're not that. working at the housing brief, Mr Rabb. That's your old job. It's finished. You're the Brexit guy now. You are literally in charge of Brexit. I've got enough on my plate without worrying about all of that. Fine. It's good to know that Theresa May put her best man on the case. Dominic Robe, thank you. Jack, I believe you have some more. In a sense, James, I don't personally have more, but I do know a woman who does. Our Brexit correspondent, Colette Coleman, joins us live from London now. Colette, an unbelievable week for the government. You've been there in amongst it all. What's the latest? Yes, well, last night I was talking to a very senior member of the cabinet who told me that the prime minister was, quote, a dead woman walking. So all in all, a difficult day for Mrs May. Yes, it was Boris Johnson. Oh, I couldn't possibly reveal that source. <laughs> well, you'd be the only one who hadn't. It's on the front page of every newspaper today. Well, if I went around spreading gossip, I wouldn't be much good at my job. Let's just say someone very close to the Prime Minister. Yes, but we know it was Boris Johnson. He's on the record as saying it. He did a whole thing in Andrew Marr about it. We couldn't get him, but he did a whole thing in the BBC. Are you trying to pass off already widely known information as some sort of inside scoop? I'm sure you'd love to read the text message I just received. Are you sure it's not just the BBC News app notifying you about something that happened last week? Colette Coleman, thank you. We could probably turn her off now. Now, on last week's programme, you'll remember we ran a very special competition for the grand prize of £9,000, a life-changing sum of money. It most certainly is. A quick reminder of the question we asked you last week. You all know that the adult film star Stormy Daniels had an affair with US President Donald Trump while he was married to his wife, and he subsequently lied about it and paid her off. But what was her eighth film of the year 2004? Was it Beefing with Pride 2? Porking with Pride 2 or Tofuing with Pride 2? And congratulations to Beth Anderson from a little village just outside of Chichester called Minge Garden who guessed the answer correctly which was of course Porking with Pride 2. And Beth joins us now on the line. Beth, congratulations, you've won £9,000. No, you're joking! £9,000?! Well done, Beth. Do you have any idea how you're going to spend the money? Is it a holiday, a new car? Obviously not a very good one, but you can still get a new car for that. As soon as I heard, we've completely maxed out the credit card. Mum needed an operation and we can afford it now, so we're going. Mum's going to live it. It's 
unbelievable. We're so happy for you, Beth, and for your mum too. That is great news. This is the best part of our job. We can start planning our future now. We thought it was all over for her, and that would have been us as a family. But we can all start planning. You sound like a remarkable woman, Beth. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm I'm, ju I'm just sixty, and I've been thinking about my life. I was born on an army base in Germany. I was there until I was six months old and then my lovely mum and dad brought us all back wait well, hold on beth where did you say you were born yeah i was born in the rhine garrison in western germany as we used to call it back so you then. weren't born in britain no no i was born in germany beth you have to have been born in britain to enter well well of course i'm english i've lived here my whole life what's that got to do with anything I only lived in Germany until I was six months old. Beth, the terms and conditions don't say open to anyone who moved to the country at some point, maybe when they were six months or something. Yeah, if we broke the rules for you, Beth, where does that end? It's a slippery slope. And, well, it's just not how we do things here. Look, I'm sorry, Beth, but this is your error. I've, I've, lived, I've lived here my whole life. It was a British Army base. Well, I didn't think I'd get the pleasure of announcing a winner twice in the same show. And yet, here we are. That prize money of £9,000 will now go to the entrant in second place, who is a Sir Richard Branson. Congratulations, Richard. We hope it brings you as much happiness as it would have Beth Anderson. You're watching Dateline 2018 and you can tweet or follow us on Instagram at Dateline2018 and we're on Facebook.com forward slash Dateline. <laughs> Beth, you have to hang up at your end. We can't... This is just self-indulgent. Now, and whatever way you look at it, England have proven themselves to be the best football team in the world. And all of Britain is united in its pride for our boys in white, in Moscow, in Russia. Sitting here in the Dateline 2018 studio, though, we can only ever give you a surface reading of arguably the greatest event in the history of time. But that's why we're handing over now to our man on the ground. He knows more about football than the Pope knows about angels and Jesus and other Pope-related things. It's our dedicated World Cup correspondent, Harry Spring. Oh. Is that a cannabis bong, Harry? No, it's f***ing crack, isn't it? It's Crack. Loving it, me. Loving it. Loving it. Yeah? Yeah. See, this morning, I went to visit two prozies, yeah? And the f***ing, the f***ing gave me a shot of this, and the f I, I can't get enough of it now. Do you know what it's done? It's given me a great whole f***ing new perspective on, 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 on everything. And my wife, she can f*** off. She can f***ing write f*** off, yeah? Harry, you I have to it. say something about the football. I mean, you have to. Apart from the fact that this segment cost us nearly half the budget for the year, and 2018 is proving to be a big year for the England team, for a sports journalist like yourself, this should be a defining moment. Harry, is football coming home? Coming home? Why would I f***ing come home? I'm quite happy here, mate, ain't it? You know, it's only 20 corona for two prozies. Think about that. And why would I go home to my f***ing wife anyway? In his defence, he didn't smash up an ambulance. And finally, amidst all the hullabaloo of the World Cup and the fortunes of the British English team, he'd be forgiven for thinking we'd all forgotten about Wimbledon. Not so. I had an old one, it was like a sort of silver one. I had it for years. Loved it. It was, I mean, it was really good. But the battery kept getting stuck. So I, I asked for one and I got given a cheap one. But it just instantly bunged up with hair. Like you put it in, it was like yeah. you know one of those old push mowers. But then I got a good, like a proper new one. It's, <laughs> it's all done. Do well, you use well. when you buy the when you buy them new, which I've only ever done twice? It always says you can run it under the tap and it's fine. But I've never quite trusted. Uh, yeah, it. I, so, uh, there's something just built in about electricity and, and yeah, it's got blades and things. Are you guys still here? Go away! <laughs> <laughs>